I made a new library for string com comparisons and this one uses a tree data structure and what is it good for? Well, it's probably slower than a hash map but you know what? It's good, it's good for my case because I don't really need a hash map and I wanted to implement something myself without needing to go into the technicals of how to make a secure hash function and all of that. So I needed just a simple uh, simple way to compare strings without having to do uh, if str compare, I don't know, str1, str2 or some string and then uh, if it's equal then do something and say I had these like even more like some different strings do something different and this would be an else if and say you needed like 10,000 of those you would have I don't know a bunch of else ifs that would all just call the same function many times and look through the string many times so you would lose a lot of a lot of efficiency and time on such a stupid problem and I didn't want to use a hash function because as I've said to complicate it for this scenario it's just a simple thing so I built a string comparison based on trees and here I left some resources on the readme which I got the inspiration from <clears throat> this article fast string searching with suffix trees and you basically basically do something like this like if you split well if you search for multiple strings this is the tree that you will get s na nas nas a a s ananas anana whatever and bananas and yeah that's how you do it and this is better than simply going oh i will do a million str comps than just having starting at the root and saying okay i'm going to jump to the b then i'm going to jump to the a then to the n then to the a then to the n a s and oh i've got this string matched if it doesn't exist then yeah it's basically a hash map but with characters so you use the character characters as key value as a as a you know um as the index in the array and this is what i've done well not exactly i will show you what i've done now three compared here Let's see so far i have implemented the this is how this is the library and then, and then this is here is a test file this is a string that we are parsing well parsing we are creating the tree out of and then testing it so here's what happens you have main on the user the user developer end you create a struct node root and just with calloc, although I, I will make functions for allocating and freeing the whole st structure that will, that would make everything just easier so you have this calloc then you call get tree and you pass the strings which are separated by this is all one string by the way it's just how you can have one string over multiple lines you just yeah don't have multiple I mean have them split it like this and then with an a new line character in between so we go down here we generated the tree and generate tree simply does work like this your string duplicate this the the strings so you have it inside of um, heap memory and not stack memory or some reserve part which you cannot modify because str talk does modify the memory then you break it by the trailing character and until token is null you redo it and continue for every token for every one of these strings okay 
and this is how it works. Then for every one of these strings, we will call mkstr. And mkstr works like so. You basically loop to the pool size. The pool size is str cmph. The pool size, this is how it works. This is a node inside of the tree. This is basically it is. Each one of these characters or nodes is represented by this, this structure. You have value is either an integer value or a character value or both. When you're at the end of the string and you face a null byte on cval, it means that you're at the end of the string, that you have reached bananas. And then there is a identifier ID for the uh, for the string that you're that you're going to use to identify the string. So you're gonna say for bananas you're gonna get 10, the value 10, and let's say then you can use a switch. Switch number or ID. Something like this, and then case bananas ID, then just do something and have a default, you know, something like this. Then here you would define it as that. Okay. So this IVAL is basically the ID of the string. If you are at the end of the string, then you have the pool size. So the size of how many children there are for this node. In this case, for this node, for this node, it will be one. For this node, it will be one and one one and so on for this one it will be one two three four and yeah then this is the pool basically so here are the four nodes that you would have this one this one this one this one for this <clears throat> that's what it does so mkstr will take this string from token and fit it inside of the tree data structure uh, even if it already exists so this is actually a to do that i have to add inside of my Read me. Uh, detect strings which are already inside the tree. Now we'll have to fix this probably. It's my second second to do. Okay. So MKSDR will well what it does is loops through the pool size. If there is not nothing, it will just um, MK not it, but Wait, I think I found a, a problem. I think I found an issue here. Okay, I didn't. Never mind. I did. I did not. <clears throat> I thought it was gonna create a node and then proceed on creating the node on the whatever. So, what's happening here is basically you're looping through the through the tree recursively, and the second that you find a character that does not match inside of the tree, you create a new node and you assign based on whether or not you are at the end of the string. If you're at the end of the string, you increment the count and then give the ID the IVAL. Else you just put the character value and then exit, you know, or proceed to the next one. Else you just return the str count, so that's it. You repeat the same process, and yeah. Then here is a cool function mknode, which will basically just take the parent. Wait, parent? Why is the parent? Oh yeah, because it uh, uses then this. Well, let's just call pr and t or pr and t, pr and t, to make it more readable. Pr and t. That's how it should be. Um, okay, you're passing the parent then to the MK node, and it will create the a new child under the parent. So it'll go pool size. It will increase it by one, and it will go pool reallocate by the pool size multiplied with struct node. And then if it's null, if I null, else just get to the child and set everything to zero. And actually, we could just mem set it, but I mean mem set zero, but okay, whatever. It doesn't matter. 
I will change that later. Next time, just uh, use mem step for in visualization. Okay. So this is everything, basically this is the whole, the whole thing, and it works. You can then go three CMP, and it will loop to the pool size for every child. It will go to to every child, and then if the character is not correct, it will continue searching. If it doesn't find anything, it will return zero. If the C val is if you are at the end of the string. Um, return the i value, the id of the string. Else, if you're not at the end of the string, just continue recursively until we get at the end of the string. Probably shouldn't use a recursion because it kind of makes everything a bit more complicated to understand. But ah, uh, it's it's fine. Then the problem here is we are looping. This is also th something that I have added to my readme. Here into two characters, hash map to remove linear checking of uh, children nodes. Um, let's see. Okay. Uh, the characters hash map was basically what I mean here. Characters hash map to, to remove linear checking of children nodes. This is the problem. You have to go to every child until you find the one that exists. If it doesn't, you you just leave. But you have to wait. You have to go to each and every one. You have to pass till you find the correct one. So say you have <clears throat> you say you have a root, and then a b. C, D, E, then A points to uh, A, D, 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 E, S, S, then B points to, I don't know, something, much like do the previous ones. And if you are at the root and you have to go, if you have a string, uh, elephant. It will take the first character and then go from a root. It will check if it's equal elf e to a. It's not to b to c to d to e, and then it will go continue here to l e p h whatever. But if the, here is more, if here in this case we have more characters as well, like p or the uh, or C, whatever, and these continue also into another direction, you know. The problem is... Here. You will then be looping, it will be like a linear search, which we are not interested in, because then again it will take a lot of time. So I'm trying to now implement what we have here. Like using a mini hash map, it's not really a hash map, I guess it is, but the hash itself is the character, so because every character has its own number in the ASCII, in, in the ASCII table, we could use that as a little, very tiny, just already existing hash map algorithm, B it's itself. So we would have, like, instead of children, we would have a struct node, well, Jesus Christ, let's see, go here. Well, three CMPH. Okay, we would have this and struct node val value and pool size struct node pool. This is our currency. We have to loop through this array of pool of nodes. What if we would do a Let's see, uh, something like struct node val val in pool size struct node pool. And this would have the benefit that we can create an array 
of pointers. So we would have like pointers. Each pointer, how big is a pointer? Like, I don't know, I guess four bytes, something like that. How big is a pointer? I don't remember. Pointer size and C. Four bytes. It's typically four bytes and then it's usually eight bytes. Okay, whatever, eight bytes. Let's count. Let's count for eight bytes. And so this would be like if we had whatever, a thousand entries or characters, we would have like 8,000 bytes, which is what, eight kilobytes? If I'm not mistaken, yeah, I guess. This is a lot better than having a struct. I mean, I, ha I mean, instead of having, well, in that case, could we just The thing is, yeah, this is probably shitty as fuck. Jesus Christ. I was thinking maybe use pointers instead of uh, directly allocating in everything inside of one big array. Like node 1, node 2, node 3, node 4, etc. Um, like ha having something, something like this. And then saying like, okay, pool, and then accessing the node. Like, uh, for H would be the H node, something like that. And then that would be our head map. Like we would go pool, current character of string. Uh, but yeah, if it doesn't exist, then we just detect it easily. This is better actually, not using pointers, because for pointers, for a pointer, pointer, we would have to have memory for both for pointers and also for the nodes. But with an array like this, well, no, actually. Because with an array like this, we would have to make, how many characters are there? 155 in ASCII, I guess, times size of node. Just to use a single node, we would have to do this. Which is, which is what? Int plus this plus point, I mean, a pointer plus a struct, which is like integer and character, a couple bytes. Two integers, one byte, and a pointer, which is four bytes. Times 255. If we do pointers, we will have to do 255 times 4, which is less than this one, because just this pointer is 4 bytes and then the rest is more bytes. So this is basically better. And then we would use only the ones that. We would use like probably what a couple of those entries. So yeah, this is better, a better solution. Just using pointers. I mean pointer, pointer, pointers. You would have like struct node pool, something like that. Actually, yeah. I guess this. I guess this is better. Uh, but I will have to think about that. I'm not gonna implement it in this video. I'm just gonna show you the test. Uh, three CMP and make it's compiled then you can link it inside of with your program it's super simple it's like two files both of them uh let's see how big they are actually i just i want to see it it's a hundred a hundred lines of code for a faster comparison then I, it is true that i have to implement much of other things like memory set or initialization, null checking, some allocate and free functions, check for memory leaks, and detect strings which are already inside the tree, and then character hash map, probably not checking, whatever. Okay. So, my make file is this. To run the test, you have to make all or make test and then make run 
conduct for test. So make all make run test. And this will go to all every header that we have that I have extracted from Wikipedia, it should be header fields. This list of HTTP headers. And it checks if it exists inside of the tree with the associated ID, with the ID that it should have. Because after you add a string, it will get the first ID, it will get the ID one. Then you add the second string, it will get the ID two. It's like a counter that on every add, it will add, add a new, it will increment a counter. So this is a string. And here, here's how it works, basically just a quick guide. You call gentry, check if it's below zero, then duplicate, whatever, and here I go through the strings copy. And I have a counter as well with me, it starts at one. Then we see string compare inside of the generated tree with the strings, and we pass the token. And then if it's equal, it's successful, it found it with the correct ID that it should have gotten. Else, we didn't find it and we should print the ID because maybe it was something invalid. At the end, we just print it down. And that's how you work. Like, you call one, two, that will, that will be the second function because I'm gonna make gen or mk or mod allocate or something like that. Like one, two, three calls, that's it. So yeah, this is my, I guess, overview of the library that I'm creating. It's a very simple library, a cool, nice project, which I will be implementing and then including inside my tiny parser, which in this current state is faulted because I need to parse headers and to parse headers, I need something fast. For example, state header parse. I need to check if it's the, this header, if it's this header, if it's this header, if it's this header, that str compare will not do the job. What I need to do is just run it through once through a tree and that will work. Now it is true that currently it is using a linear search for, for the children, but I will implement a, ha a tiny hash map as I've said. So, hey, that's it. That's it for this video. Here's the code if you're interested. I will be keeping it updated and fixing those dos in the coming days. So, uh, yeah, if you want to collaborate or if you want to download it, you are free to do so here or email me. Send me, send me an email if you want to collaborate and let help me finish this. Uh, that would be awesome. So, yeah, other than that, I hope you have a great day and goodbye.